It has been a busy, busy Friday, and I'm not sure the day is done, but we got to reset a couple of things. Players going to the portal, a flip from Tennessee to USF. What's going on there? Lockdown. It's an extra little Friday edition of Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We interrupt your Friday regular schedule programming here on a Friday evening to bring you an extra edition of Locked On Balls. Uh, We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is your team every single day. I'm your host, Eric Kane. Appreciate you guys for getting in a little OT for Locked On Balls. And this bonus episode is presented by our friends over at Price Picks. PricePicks.com slash Locked On College. Use the promo code Locked On College for a first deposit match up to $100. And again, it's, it's not been a very good Friday afternoon for Tennessee. I will say this off the top. I think good news is coming Um, later this evening or maybe tomorrow. um, I I do think some good news is coming, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, Nonetheless, yeah, a lot's going on right now. Tyler Barron enters the transfer portal. Danico Slaughter expected to enter the transfer portal. Jonathan Eccles flips from Tennessee, not to Alabama, not to Georgia, not to LSU, not to Florida, but to USF. I mean, what in the world, right? Let's 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 get in here and talk about it first. Let's talk about Tyler Barron. Um, you know, Tyler Barron, he he he's been halfway in, halfway out his entire career at Tennessee. And so as a Tennessee fan, you can be frustrated by this, and that's okay. But I do want to start out by saying that he bought in this year more than he ever has. He took coaching from Ronnie Garner and ran with it. He was healthy, he was more durable, and he was productive. Tyler Barron was a really, really good player for Tennessee here in 2023. Um, so he had a good year. And so I, I wouldn't act like he sucks or he's not very good or anything. I mean, he had a really, really good year. Now, the thought was Tyler Barron was going to explore his NFL opportunities. Um, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. When <laughs> you know when Tyler Barron played his last game of the season against Vanderbilt, he was playing like a man that was never that had nothing to lose, okay, because he was not coming back. In fact, he had, you know, Stopped a couple of people and thanked them for covering him and and thanked him for everything they'd done throughout his career here at Tennessee. I mean that was that was the night of Vanderbilt, and then you started to get kind of word that okay maybe he is going to stay and take advantage of his COVID year of eligibility, but maybe it's not going to be at Tennessee. Um, and, and so him entering the transfer portal is not a shock whatsoever. Remember when Olivier uh, Cumwell did it and he said okay well he's given himself another option. I think that's kind of what this is. Now will Tyler Barron end up at another school? I think that's likely. Could Tyler Barron still declare for the NFL draft? Yes, he could. I think this kind of just gives him another option. And and guys, let's face it, you know, we're in the era of name, image, and likeness. And what's your name, image, and likeness can bring back for you and how much money you can make. And that just kind of that's just kind of where we are right now. And for Tyler Barron, from a business perspective, it's probably not a bad move. Get out there and see how much money you can make, maybe at an Ohio State or maybe at another program. I don't know and see what's going on. Um, Again, I don't know what the future holds for Tyler Barron. I don't. But I think from a business perspective, it's probably not a bad move. As far as Tennessee's concerned, how does this affect Tennessee? Well, again, he had six sacks this year. He was amongst, you know, top 10 in the SEC in sacks, top 13 in the SEC in TFLs. He had a really, really productive year. Um, Sure, you'd like for him to come back, and you would like for him to play another year for Tennessee, but the cupboard's not bare, okay? He had his position, you know, opposite of the Leos. He played Leo the first, I guess, year of the system here with Tim Banks and Josh Heupel. Played that Leo position. Then he flipped over and played more of the five technique, a traditional defensive end. And he played pretty well. Um, at that position, you have Dominic Bailey. At that position, you have Tyree West. At that position, you have Tyree Weathersby, who didn't play this year due to injury, but is a true freshman, and he would have played. So again, the cupboard's not bare. And again, I'm not trying to say like his production's easily replaceable. I'm not saying that because he had a, he had a really really good year this year. But you've got a you got a lot of options left to kind of duplicate those results. And so we'll see what happens to Tyler Barron. Uh, a lot of people said this, you know, for Tyler Barron, is this a money grab? I mean, call it what it is. I think that yeah. I mean, it it certainly kind of looks like that. Could Tyler Barron still go to the NFL? Yes, he could. Um, could Tyler Barron <laughs> come back to Tennessee? I mean, he could. If you remember a couple years ago, he entered the transfer portal for like 12 hours and then came back out and stayed at Tennessee. So it, it's happened before, but 
you know, we'll we'll, we'll kind of see what happens. But Tyler Barron heads to the transfer portal, and uh, that was kind of the first domino that fell on a Friday afternoon. The second domino, a defensive back with another year, a COVID year of eligibility remaining. He intended, or he it was reported that he intends to another transfer portal. Who is that, and what's going on there? That's coming up next here on Locked On Balls. Price picks. Largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros, sharks, you pick more than or less than the two to six player stat projections, and then you watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is going to get their projections for players. You fill out your grid, two to six players, and you're seriously just picking more than or less than. You know, example, Joe Milton, 225 yards passing. Do I think he's going to go throw for more than or less than that 225 against, you know, if he plays in the Citrus Bowl or whatever? That's just kind of an example right there. You do that for two to six players, and you can win up to 25 times your money back this football season. Plus, if you go to pricebooks.com slash locked on college, use the promo code locked on college, you'll get a first the you'll get a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That ain't bad. Uh, pricepicks.com slash locked on college. Pricepicks.com slash locked on college for an instant deposit match on your first deposit up to $100. All that and more at Pricepicks. The next domino that immediately fell right after the Tyler Barron news was that Danico, Danico Slaughter intends to enter the transfer portal. Welcome back into your bonus coverage here at Locked On Balls. I'm your host, Eric Kane. We spoke about Tyler Barron entering the portal. Now Danico Slaughter is expected to to enter the transfer portal. And that's something that we had heard a couple days ago. Um, expect to see Danico Slaughter enter the portal. And, um, you know, I like Danico Slaughter. I do. And I honestly, I wish he was staying. And, and everybody has their own opinions. Um, I just can't get the Kentucky game 2021 out of my head. We always talk about how, you know, Kamal had in South Carolina game. That was a bad reason. The Kentucky game in 2021, I just can't get out of my head. His first game playing the cornerback position. If you remember the two previous games, he played safety for Jalen McCullough when he was having some off the field issues. Danico Slaughter went in and played safety for those games. McCullough comes back and Danico Slaughter s- switches to cornerback, slides outside, and his first game ever playing cornerback, he is responsible for two turnovers. Had an interception where he trailed near hip, went up high point of the football, came down with it, had a slant to Dane Key in the red zone over the middle and just laid that hit stick. <laughs> You're listening and that hurts your ears. I'm sorry. Laid that hit stick ball, shoots up in the air. Juwan Mitchell, he's had about four teams since that game, right? Juwan Mitchell catches it and returns it 48 yards down the sideline. Um, I, I just I respect the heck out of a guy that can come downhill and just hit somebody. And that's what Danico Slaughter does. And um it was really, really cool to see. And and I feel like, you know, again, he's got one of the strangest stories. In the 2020 season, he came in as a true freshman, started at star his first game ever in college. South Carolina, the opener, because of all the COVID issues. And then was a special teams player and was just a special teams player really up until 2022. He didn't do a whole lot. Then he comes in, plays safety a little bit, shifts out to corner, and then he's been at corner ever since. Starts the year as the Tennessee cornerback, dealt with a foot injury, missed some time earlier this season. But is corner still his best spot? I remember after that Kentucky game I referenced, he said, I I view myself as an, in, as an in-the-box player which is a safety or a star. And I remember writing after the game, well, you could have fooled me. (laughs) You could have fooled me. But still, like, he has a body top for safety. Um, I think if he were to return and stay on the team, then he would have played safety next year. Or maybe star. Maybe T-Mac. And that's another name that he'll have a decision to make in terms of will he enter the portal? Will he stay? I think it's more likely that Tamarian McDonald would stay and play his COVID year here at Tennessee. But, again, that's another name to watch. But I'm, I just I don't know if Tennessee ever got the most out of the Nico Slaughter, and that's frustrating. That's why I was hoping that if he elected to return in Tennessee and everybody settled on a prize, because I mean, it is what it is, and I'll get to that here in a moment, that he could play one position, play safety, or play star, and just see what happens. But Danico Slaughter is intending to enter the transfer portal, and it looks like he's going to go get that opportunity somewhere else. Now, bigger picture stuff. A lot of people, a lot of fans, you know, will sit here and say, oh, he sucks, always off, always off. Well, I don't like him. He's so bad. He's so bad. He's so bad. And then when these same players enter the transfer portal, what's going on? Spire's awful. Why give money to Spire? They can't close. I mean, again, like you'll see people like Austin Price say it all the time, and I couldn't agree more. It's not Monopoly out here. 
I mean, you don't just have an unlimited amount of money, okay? There's not a fountain over there that's squirting out coins, okay? I mean, that's just not how it works. And so with these 20-plus seniors who have a COVID year, who want to decide if they can come back or move on in life or enter the transfer portal, I mean, they're seeking, as they should in this era of football, they're seeking some name, image, and likeness money, right? They're, they're seeking some opportunities, and, and I, I mean, to each their own. Some value that more than others. All that type of stuff. It is what it is. But Tennessee and the player have to come to agreement. Like, okay, well, this price is fair, okay, or this price is, you know, whatever. You know, the collective has to come in and say this price is fair. This price is not. And depending on what the parties decide, you know, it's okay. Well, I'm going to take my chances and go elsewhere. It just kind of is what it is, right? And so when you have an abundance of seniors like this that have this decision because of the COVID year of eligibility, you only have 83 scholarships available because of, I mean, 85 total, but 83, 82 to 83 this year because of the, uh, you know, the issues with the Jeremy Pruitt staff and everything. I mean, there's just not enough spots for everybody and there's not enough money for everybody. And so you got to have these hard conversations and, and you have these conversations and then ultimately maybe the player says, okay, well, thank you. I'm going to go see what I can do elsewhere. And that's their right. And so, you know, when you're seeing some of these guys and I think there'll be a couple more enter the transfer portal and want to go test the waters and see what happened. Maybe the waters are fine. You know, as we've seen many, many times over the first couple of cycles of the transfer portal, the water's not always as cool or the pillow is not always cool on the other side or, you know, whatever phrase I'm trying to pull out here. It just kind of is what it is. And so uh, Danico Slaughter intends to enter the transfer portal. And, and and for me, that kind of stinks because I wanted to see what he could do like at star or at safety. Uh, but it is what it is. You look at the cupboard now. We're talking about that, okay? So Warren Burrell, transfer portal, makes so much sense. Uh, Brandon Turnage, transfer portal, makes so much sense. Those are two corners. Danico Slaughter now, transfer portal, makes so much sense. That's three corners. You look at least for the Citrus Bowl in the short term, okay? Gabe G.D. Lolly, who has a year of eligibility left, we'll see what he wants to do. Um, <laughs> you know, Gabe G.D. Lolly, I would assume, will start and play the, 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 the Citrus Bowl. The other cornerback, Ricky Gibson, right? I mean, you got Ricky Gibson. Uh, the cornerback's behind Ricky Gibson. Remember, the redshirt rule doesn't apply for bowl games. Ricky Gibson already wasn't going to redshirt. Jordan Matthews, though, I believe is on that cutoff of four games. It doesn't matter. Jordan Matthews can play in this game. And he can still redshirt. Um, but Jordan Matthews should be getting a ton of reps. Uh, Christian Connor should be getting a ton of reps. And so for everybody, myself included at times, saying want to see youth, want to see youth, want to see youth, at the cornerback position for this ball game, you're going to see it. And it gives an, an opportunity for some of these young guys to you know, get in a whole lot of work. So when you're looking ahead to next year, okay, it seems like you're on the right path. Depending on what Tamiri McDonald wants to do, Depending on what Wesley Walker wants to do, you might see some youth and you might see some youth play safety as well. I mean, not really youth anymore, kind of a veteran now, but Andre Turn time will likely start for Wesley Walker in the bowl game because of the injury. But Wesley Walker's gonna be back. Um, you know, could Tamari McDonald, if he comes back, play safety? Could, you know, I don't know. There's just there's a lot of options here. But point is you are gonna see some of these young guys play in the bowl game and and, and start out by playing next year. Uh, depending on if you go get a veteran out of the transfer portal or something, which again to replenish, to relinquish those those spots at cornerback, you know, C. C. Gibbs was a guy Tennessee offered from the FCS level. Uh, you might want to try to bring in a cornerback just to you know put another body in there and, and, and competition and all that too. But anyway, uh, Danico Slaughter intends to enter the transfer portal that came out immediately after the Tyler Barrett news. Um, one other thing we'll talk about the high school ranks and uh, there's a flip there with Jonathan Eccles. But also, um, a couple of receivers for Tennessee this week went ahead and had their ceremonial signing days at their high schools. Of course, it's not real signing day, but they're not going to be in school those days. But one of those receivers, Braylon Staley, has been flirting with South Carolina a lot lately. But, you know, what's the latest on that? And how big of a win was that for Friday afternoon for Tennessee? That and a whole lot more is coming up next right here on Locked On Balls. I do want to tell you about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're at a speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. 
With over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guarantee Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money is back. Because of eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive today at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. The final domino that fell on Friday, at least at this time, and again, I'll say it again, I do think that there will be some good news later this evening, maybe night, if not today on a Friday, maybe Saturday morning. I do think Tennessee fans will get a little breath of fresh air, some good news. Um, But (laughs) the final domino that kind of fell on this wild, rapid, fast-paced moving Friday afternoon was that Jonathan Eccles flipped to USF. I caught word Thursday night. I was out with some buddies. I got word Thursday night that Jonathan Eccles was going to flip to UCF. USF, excuse me, USF. And I literally looked at my phone and I said, oh my goodness. And my buddy said, what? What's going on? Why did you have that reaction? (laughs) And I told him. um, I I told him what I learned. And he was like, oh my gosh. But like that was my immediate reaction. Um, Jonathan Eccles, I think, was kind of a little bit of a project player. I went down and spoke with him at IMG Academy when I was on vacation um, late last spring in the, in the Bay. Um, and I went over there and I interviewed him. I did a stand-up with him. I watched him practice and everything. And, you know, he, he's a defender. I mean, Alabama wanted him to play edge, right? I mean, he's a defender, really, really good. But I think he's still learning the tight end position, running routes, all that type of stuff. And so I think he's a work in progress. But he's got a good body type. And and he was one of the first. Uh, he was one of the first to commit to Tennessee. Actually, he committed to Tennessee. Tennessee not this past July fourth, but the July fourth, the year before that, he was the first commit to jump in for the class of twenty twenty four. And he kind of flirted a little bit with Florida and some other schools this past summer, but re upped his commitment and said, "Hey, I'm done everything." You know, this past summer, and it felt like it was all good. But I, I do think that. If Tennessee were to have gotten Roger Saliapunga, you know, um, you know Max LeBlanc or, or, or whoever else in this tight end class, you know, maybe he would have been second fiddle. Maybe he might not even have been a part of the class to begin with. Uh, he was certainly going to be a part of this class because Tennessee needs tight end bodies. We talk about tight ends and how that's number one priority in the transfer portal. And you have Ethan Davis, <laughs> Ethan Davis and Emmanuel Coye, but I don't think he's ready to help. But you got Ethan Davis next year, and that is literally it. So. From an optic standpoint, from the looks of this, it's a bad look. It is. It's a bad look. Credit Alex Golish. All right. He's the one that found him. He's the one that recruited him. He's the one that got the commitment. And when he went to USF, he never stopped. And I remember being at IMG Academy back in the spring and talking with Jonathan Eccles. And I'm like, hey, USF's here. And he's like, yeah, they're here all the time. Um, they're there to talk to him. They're there to talk to him, and and they never quit. I know they're right there, so it's a short drive over to IMG, but uh, you know from from Tampa Bay to uh, to, to Bradenton. But uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, um, they never gave up. But it's still a bad look when you look at the numbers wise for Tennessee, and you look at the lack of bodies at the position, and you look at the fact that a tight end is trans or a tight end is flipping from a southeastern conference school to usf again huge get for usf credit alex golish in that regard huge get for usf but it's kind of a bad look i do not think this would be as big of a deal if roger salia punga was in this class if any other tight end was in this class i don't but the fact is they're, they're not and you know fans want to get frustrated and call out the coaching staff and all that and i get it i mean tennessee's swung and miss on on, on a lot in this 24 class but i got news for you you swing and miss on a lot of prospects in every single class. I'm talking to one of my buddies over here, Osborne, and he says, yada, 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 UT is always the bridesmaid, never the bride. And my simple response was, Nico, Mike Matthews, Jordan Ross, three pretty good brides if I do say so myself. Hobbs, Carter, looking back to last cycle. And he responds with, Riddell, Roger S., Seton, Amari Jefferson, LeBlanc. Sure, uh, to his point, you're always going to miss. You're never going to bat a 1,000, especially when you're in this pool of elite recruiting and you're going up against the Georgias and the Alabamas and the LSUs and the Florida States year in and year out. And now you throw in name, image, and likeness, and literally it can change on a dime. It can change at the, at the turn of the clock, in a minute, in a second it can change. It's never been harder to cover recruiting than it is right now. 
but I mean, you still, you know, brought in some pretty good talent in this class. And, and since Josh Heupel has been here, you still brought in some pretty good talent over the last like two or three cycles. Sure. You've missed a lot. Um, but it just, it doesn't make it any less frustrating today when you lose a Jonathan Eccles, who again, was Jonathan Eccles going to be all SEC? I don't know. I have no clue. You know, I mean, get him here on campus, bulk him up, develop him and all that. Maybe he is in a couple of years. I don't know. But from an optic standpoint, it's just not a good look. It's really just not a good look. So that happened. That was kind of the final domino on a Friday that fell. Um, earlier this week, Mike Matthews, who has never wavered in his Tennessee commitment, went ahead and had his ceremonial signing day at Parkview because uh, they're going to be out of school. And he went ahead and signed, you know, quotation marks. So he's locked in, ready to go. Braylon Staley, Matt Ray, who joined our show yesterday, um, you know, reported late Friday afternoon that Braylon Staley has told VolQuest that he is done. A late push from South Carolina. They were flirting pretty hardcore. Late, late push. But Braylon Staley said, hey, I'm done. I'm Tennessee. And he went went ahead and had his ceremonial little signing day at his school as well. Again, this is not signing day. Signing day is in a, in a couple of weeks. But uh, you know, schools are going to be out uh, going to be out at those times. So they they have their own little signing days. So anyway, I thought that was that was kind of big as well. Also, if you remember, talked about it earlier on Friday's normal show. Uh, tight end from Notre Dame transfer portal Holden Stays is going to be in town for an official visit this weekend. Jaron Sensiball from the high school ranks defensive back is going to be in town this weekend. Um, I mentioned a newer name at tight end. His tight end is the absolute priority for Tennessee to begin things in the transfer portal. Uh, Bronner Sharp from southeastern Louisiana at the FCS level. He's likely to be on campus next week. And a new name at tight end from Kentucky is tight end Jordan Dingle. He entered the transfer portal yesterday, and he's expected to meet with Vol, some of the Vol coaching staff at the first of this week. So uh, some new names and kind of what's going on this weekend on the hill over the university of tennessee so uh, i thought i needed to do like a little bonus episode because there was so much that went on on this friday afternoon and um hope you guys enjoyed it for the third time i'll say this i don't think the news is done today so if you're frustrated and you're fed up and you're upset stay tuned i think some good news could be coming later on today and uh, we'll see what happens there. Appreciate you guys for watching and listening to Lockdown Balls as bonus content. Um, when we uh, return on a Monday, we'll recap everything that, got, that has gone on. <laughs> you know, if, if all this happened Friday afternoon, what's to say it's going to happen on Sunday? By Sunday, right? We'll talk all about it on your Monday edition of Lockdown Balls. Please subscribe to the Lockdown Balls channel if you haven't already on YouTube and download us wherever you listen to your podcast. Appreciate you guys. Enjoy your weekend, and we will talk again soon, everybody.